Hi, my name is Matt Storr and I repair saxophones for a living and we are doing an in-depth tour of my Airstream saxophone repair shop. And I think this will probably be the last video in the series. Uh, this is about the supplies I use. Um, we did one that was on the tools, which most of which are over here. Got a couple tools on this side, um, but uh, that was probably tools and then some supplies. And this will be supplies and then some tools. So. Um, the cabinets you see are Acro Mills, A-K-R-O-M-I-L-S. Um, I forget what the exact name is of these, but they're steel frame and then, you know, plastic drawers. And some of these I've had for like 15 years. Some of them I've had for like eight, and I can't tell the difference. They seem like they're going to last forever. Um, and then these drawers are actually Ikea, and I built the cabinet that they all rest in. Um, so you can see over here I've got my... Um, 220 grit roll of aluminum oxide cloth. Uh, that's for neck corks. And then below that is polished cloth. And then sandpaper down there, various types. That's only some of my sandpaper. Um, I use lots of different grits for different things. On top here, you can see I've got my letter stamping set, my number stamping set. Um, I used a time clock for a while to like figure out my billing. Um, it's not on right now, but you know, like I actually had timesheets and would actually like punch myself in and out of jobs to figure out how long things took. Um, this is, this is my tuner. As you can see it's been around a while. It's like mostly brown now. It used to be white. Um, I'd like to eventually get a strobo tuner, but I want the chromatic kind so I can see the overtones at the same time. Um, large drill bits. This mostly goes like in the tailstock of the lathe. Um, and don't use it too much. Uh, various like hardwood blocks that I use for holding things in the um, vise sometimes. Uh, old phone. Two sets of drill bits, um, like a full set. You really do need these. These are the full length and then these are the stubby ones. I use the stubby ones more often probably. Um, this is a set of plug gauges. I use this sometimes uh, with key fitting or to check something. Um, so you can actually use these to like, you know, if you want to key fit to 108, right? You can use these to swedge down around um, so that uh, you know that you're getting like a really um, precise diameter. I don't do that as often as I just use the rods that are in the saxophone, but sometimes I'll do that. I'm not sure, you know, I think there's kind of pros and cons to both approaches. Uh, there is a block I made for rods and so forth when I need to keep them organized, um, taking things apart, putting them back together. Uh, here's some of my chemicals. Let's see. This one's like front and center, but I'd never use it. The ones I use are the contact cement. Sometimes I need to like make a patina on a part that has been polished or uh, you know, soldered and it's not the same color as everything else around it. Um, so I like mix some stuff up. I use the lacquer quite a bit for pad treatment. I've seen one of my other videos. Got like some thinner for my contact cement. You will need that. Uh, Tarnex I use every once in a while. Uh, let's see, more lacquer. Uh, Scotch Guard, someone told me to try that on pads. I mean, it's, it's still here, years and years later. Um, actually, this is something that's kind of cool. So, like, cleaner wax and polish. You can use that sometimes if you get, like, a foggy spot in lacquer, like, from it being dried out or maybe someone tried to use like a cleaner on it that didn't work well, um, that can kind of bring shine back to lacquer. Some people like to do that with furniture polish. Um, I have been taught, I you know, got the tip to use this stuff and it seems to last a long time and do, do a good job. Um, some grease I tried for um, pivot screw lube. This is my secret, uh, ingredient cork grease that Brad, actually, Brad Wary out in Seattle, who I really like, he's an interesting guy, uh, made for me. 
And then I've got, there's nothing really in here right now, except this is like an exact size reamer for tenor saxophone shanks. Um, this is like an old toolbox from Khan, um, like the factory. I've got various types of tubing in here, uh, heat shrink and otherwise. I'm trying to think, do I actually have anything like worth seeing? It's mostly just tubing, but the cool thing is that it came from Khan. And like a couple like, you know, sort of museum things. Um, my springs, uh, my coffee, and let's see. Yeah, if I start back over here, these are all labeled. And I'll open them up. Um, these are mouthpiece facing supplies. Some of it. A lot of my stuff is actually inside right now because that's one of the things I can do with limited mobility on my left hand because um, most of it's done on my right. Uh, all my reeds, which I like old reeds, so um, surplus supplies. I like stuff that I know I order a lot, like these. I try to always keep like one or two like secreted away somewhere, so if I run out. Um, you know, if I allow myself to run out, I've got a little bit of a grace period for while I order stuff. Uh, clamps. These, I actually, I don't use these. Um, these are actually luthier tools. And they were given to me uh, by my friend Pat, who died. So I just never took them out. And I guess they'll just stay there. Uh, junk drawer. Just like random stuff that I don't use. Um, sometimes, you know, stuff comes in handy. It's like key clamps and like these are buffing gloves. Um, it's just like random pieces of stuff in here. This is my memorabilia drawer. This is like where like those ads come from. Got like original pads, like an original um, like spring set. I've been over some of this stuff before. Like some like set aside unopened reeds. I guess those are just extras, but they look kind of nice. Um, let's see. Over here, uh, it says neck fitting, but what is it instead? It's like soldering stuff. Um, you know, a helping hand, uh, a, uh, what's it called? Soldering brick. Uh, some plating stuff, some of my plating stuff. I've got a more complete kit. Uh, miscellaneous tools. This is like where, like I did that video on like the holder for uh, the con neck, like that's here. Um, this is like a really large punch set. They use sometimes, especially on like Con 30Ms to punch out the specific size of the, um, like felt discs you need. This is my backup Dremel that I can repair and use when the other one fails. Uh, this is like a little block I use to level um, Fisher pad cups. It's got little like divots for the um, spuds. And uh, here's like a tool for like undoing the screws that hold in the washer resonators on the very rarely seen buffet saxophones that have like a threaded rod silver soldered to the middle of the inside of the pad cup and the resonators are held on by a little like you know nut that screws down on that and holds a washer down so yeah just kind of like stuff like that some inside micrometers or inside whatever they're called extra sheet cork and felt uh, big sax pads. When you order from Fariz, every once in a while, they'll just give you a grab bag of this stuff. So um, I keep it and like cut leather out of the ones I like. Mouthpiece, uh, sax, tap and die. I have two sets the from Fariz, I think. Metric and um, Imperial. And then like a, the like rod slotting tool. Uh, various burnishers and hammers. Uh, there's like my literal grandfather's hammer. Um, uh, this burnisher is actually really handy. Um, you like hold it against what you need and you can like lightly tap it uh, or you can get like up underneath stuff with it. Um, but yeah, I use burnishers by hand. This is like a uh, solder scraper. More often than I thought I would. Uh, random woodwind mouthpieces. I love this thing. It's an old mouthpiece case. It says Penzl Mueller on it. It's got some of my favorite weird old mouthpieces in it. 
more mouthpieces. This is like a junkier drawer. Uh, mouthpiece caps and like neck plugs. If a horn comes to me without a neck plug, I put one in. Um, oh, and this is more like leak light stuff. This is stuff that Brad made for me, mixed in with some Botas stuff. And moving on, we've got dividers for the drawers. Uh, looks like some random silver stuff, like silver cloth. If you put this inside the case, uh, there's like cloths you can put in there. If you put inside the case of a silver saxophone, it stops it tarnishing quite so fast. Um, some like watch repair stuff, various steel wools and uh, brass wool or copper wool, I guess. Some dent balls that don't have a home anywhere else. This is like a body straightening tool. Um, most of this is stuff I don't use too often, although I, I do use that fairly often. Um, this is blank material for making rollers. Um, there's a video where I showed how I do that, and this is the blank material for it. Uh, glue, and I don't know, this is like for a tool I don't even have. I just, I should throw that away, but I just don't usually throw tools away. Uh, razors, as you can see, I like to keep a lot of them in stock because I use these a lot. These are the ones I like right now. Um, finding a really good razor blade that's actually sharp is dumb hard. So when you find one you like, get a bunch of them because, you know, stuff just changes. Miracle cloth, this stuff is great. Um, I don't know what that is. Oh, it's a rubber band that's like dyed. This stuff is really good for cleaning tarnished brass. Um, it'll even, you can be like right up against like lacquer and it won't damage the lacquer too much. Um, it's just kind of greasy and gross. You gotta clean it off when you're done. The pipe cleaners I use. Oh, they stopped saying BJ Longs. That's really funny. I guess they got tired of it. Now they just say Longs. Used to be BJ Longs. Um, cotton swabs I use. These are the particular ones. Type 3 products. Um, the regular tip. And then the other side's a tapered tip. Uh, random parts, resonators. Uh, it says leak light stuff, there's nothing in there right now. R more resonators. Uh, this is usually full of lock picking stuff, but my son is messing with that right now. Um, these are some of my old time cards. Uh, I don't wanna see the address, but you can see like me trying to clock in and out and figure out like how much time stuff is taking me. Uh, more ligatures. Oh, look. That's cool. And more ligatures. And then over here is secondary pad storage. I keep trying to find another type of pad I like, but I haven't been able to yet. So these are empty right now. Um, beer bottle opener. Super necessary. Let's see here. More dividers. Um, some backup handles and backup drivers for screws. Uh, epoxy, five minute epoxy is something that um, you've got use for as a saxophone repairman every once in a while, um, or repair person every once in a while. If someone doesn't want their bell to body, bra bell to bow joint, sorry, their body to bow joint soldered, using five minute epoxy is something that um, works pretty well. Also, I use this for doing uh, palm key risers, which I made a video on. Um, these are various old, this is like, I guess that's a full set of Selmer um, screw-on resonators and then some plastic ones and some extra metal ones. I'll try to complete a set if someone brings one of those in and doesn't have anything. Felt bumpers, I get these from Votaw. I pretty much use black all the time. Felt discs, same thing. These like various sizes. Um, I do have white felts, green felts, and red felts, so I can match stuff that's already on there, but black is my default when I'm doing an overhaul, unless someone else otherwise. Uh, various different thicknesses of Teflon. I almost always only use the super thin stuff or one step up if I want more durability. Uh, some random cables. Little baggies, always got used for those. Nothing in there. Q-tips, normally nothing there now. Pipe cleaning Q-tips, nothing in there now. So that means I need to order more. Because you saw how much I had, I still want more. These are the tenon shrinking collets for uh, neck fitting. Uh, random old rollers. And new rollers made of hard rubber that I can modify when I need to replace one. Um, and then I've got like parts that are specific to 
many different makes. Um, LeBlanc is empty. No. Uh, Martin. Uh, Bisher. This is only some of my Bisher stuff. Uh, Buffet. There's actually those like weird screw-on resonators that that tool would go to. King. Callworth. Yamaha. Yamaha was empty. No. Uh, my Bisher snaps. These are not for sale. Everyone always asks me. They're not for sale. Extra razors. <laughs> I've got a problem, don't I? Some more files. Hard rubber rods I can make rollers out of. And this is actually crazy. This is an original, like, blank from Khan. This is, like, so soft that I probably could never actually use it. It's probably just going to crumble, but I'll keep it around. Nothing in there. Uh, a Khan. Uh, these are some, like, Oleg risers that someone told me to keep, so I still have them. Uh, flat springs of various types. Finding flat springs that don't suck has been hard. Uh, key guard and adjusting screws. Uh, random posts. More random posts. I could like modify. None of these are going to be an exact fit, but I could like modify these if I wanted to. Um, rods. So like if I ever take a rod out of an instrument um, for various reasons, like maybe something's messed up or I'm oversizing it or whatever, I save it because like even if like the back half is screwed up, I might be able to find something that fits, cut it down and save myself some time if the rod is like in good condition. More glue. Uh, miscellaneous screws. So this stuff, if you ever get like a grab bag that has just miscellaneous stuff in it, um, it's great. I This used to be full. I've gone through this a lot. This is where like a lot of like weird, you know, if, like something comes through I don't have a part for. I can look in here and half the time find something close enough I can modify it. Of course, I have to make it from scratch. Uh, saw blades. Um, these are, what are those? It says Exacto and drawers, but those are actually... Um, Looks like spring, flat spring screws, pearls, uh, Selmer bits, <laughs> uh, thumb rings and strap hooks. And then my pads are here. And actually I just ordered some. So this is thousand dollars worth of pads. Uh, so this is how I keep my pads organized by, you know, half millimeter from smallest starts at seven. The highest goes up to 60. If I need something bigger than that, I'll order it, um, but that's pretty rare. But keep them like that. And yeah, I think I think that's it. I think we've actually gone through everything. Uh, this might have been in the shot sometimes. That, that's not for saxophone repair. That's for um, when I first start the fire, I split some wood a little bit. Um, the chunks I have, I split them down. Um, I guess there's a couple more supplies up here. Uh, there's my like um, catalogs that I order from, my like shellac flakes that I make stuff from, um, and like some random Airstream tools and like packing supplies are back here. And there's my CO2 monitor. And yeah, I think we actually did it all. Maybe I didn't go over that part. Um, that's a giant wrench for the lathe, and that is a jeweler saw for making slots or cutting things off. And yeah, I think that's it. Maybe the only thing we haven't looked at yet is, so inside there is like nothing. That's just kind of like junk from other places. There's like an extra motor for the lathe. Like there's electronic wiring, like just kind of junk in there. Um, my old fan, I love that thing. It's like a super old Bornado. It's all actual metal. You have to oil it once a year, but it works pretty well. So in here, which I don't think I've gone over, is like lathe parts and tools. And then raw materials. Um, and then these are like random lathe tools too. And these are random machine tools that are like, or machinist tools that I need to, at some point, go through. But I got some with a toolbox, and some of them are functional. I think I've harvested most of the stuff that's like immediately functional. I need to kind of keep going through it. But yeah, so that is the Airstream saxophone repair shop. 
Hopefully you found that helpful, useful, informative. Um, I know this is a little different than my normal stuff, but you know, some of the people that watch this channel are, you know, curious about it or might find this helpful for like building their own shops. Um, and hopefully it served that purpose. Thanks for watching.